Stoichiometry and phosphor sustainability issues are linked to each other. and They came to be linked in my research because when you study the chemical composition of an organism, that is its stoichiometry, you learn pretty quickly that phosphorus is really important. It's need, needed to make DNA, for example, so we make the joke that phosphorus holds your genes up. Furthermore, I can't even sit up straight in this chair without phosphorus because my bones and your bones, everyone in this room's bones, is made from phosphorus mineral, a black calcium phosphorus mineral. So stoichiometry helps us identify phosphorus as really being important to life and also important to water quality because phosphorus comes into water, the algae bloom and go crazy because they love phosphorus too. Phosphorus is a critical element for all life. It's uh, a key component of DNA. Um, in humans, it's in our bones, and it's an important fertilizer. But uh, supplies of phosphorus are very finite, and there's a number of geological and geopolitical uncertainties um, that, that risk the future supplies of phosphorus in the form of phosphate rock. And the current practices are not sustainable. And so Jim's involvement with the Sustainable Phosphorus Initiative at, at ASU is important because it's leading the research agenda and bringing together scientists from a variety of disciplines to synthesize the available knowledge and identify solutions. So when we think about phosphorus sustainability and the food system and water, what could be more essential for human welfare and happiness than water and food? So we can decrease our reliance on these mined fossil phosphorus sources and switch to a recycled green phosphorus economy. Um, and that'll uh, be a great solution all around. And there's lots of economics and policy implications of that to be put into place. Jim and I, my research are very different. We work on very different things. Um, but I have really come to appreciate the work that he's done uh, because of the quantitative nature of it and the utilization of the research to, to really help answer questions that are important to all of us. And so I've come to appreciate Jim's research from what it can do to make all of our lives better. Professor Elser's is, I think, when you look at him and you look at his work, I think he is actually the model of the contemporary academic that we hope for. He's looking at very big sweeping problems. He also, though, I think is important because he approaches it from an interdisciplinary approach. Now, that's a hallmark of his research. So I think that's why if we look and we say, what do we hope the modern scientist looks like? What do we hope the academic community can produce? I think he is a model for that. I think that one of the best things about Jim is he's, he's the consummate faculty member. He's involved in everything. He is teaching, he's research, he's outreach. He volunteers to uh, have leadership positions within the, the School of Life Sciences. Jim does it all. Yeah, so ASU, it's an amazing place. And it's, uh, I've been here a while, since 1990. Um, there's been a transformative um, experience for me, but also for the institution during those 25 years. It's certainly been a lot of changes. Schools coming into existence, new enterprises taking place, new initiatives almost by the week. Um, very, very exciting place to go and uh, to be. Um, I value it a lot because um, of the opportunities it gives me to reach a lot of students and have an impact.